In Miami, Florida, a Boeing 747 burst into flames shortly after takeoff. Oh my god, it's on fire! Oh my god! Sorry. It's on fire! Mom! Now the Daily Mail reported they found a softball-sized hole above the engine as a flight immediately turned around after catching fire, as fortunately all five on board survived. Now this is an older discontinued model from Boeing, but this does bear shocking similarities as the Boeing 737 that recently had its door plug randomly flying off during flight, where passengers are apparently being offered 1500 bucks from Alaska Airlines. As many wonder where this airliner has its priorities at. Now it is clear that there is an uptick in air travel malfunctions in 2024, which is a huge cause for concern. But I do think it's important that we don't attribute every mistake on diversity, equity, and implosions. I just think it's equally fair that we don't attribute none of the mistakes on diversity, inclusion, and explosions. As we recently saw this American Eagle flight from New York slide off the runway due to snow. But also Japan, who notoriously avoids forced diversity, also had a major crash this month. As Reuters writes, they tragically lost five. So not every accident can be explained by the lowering standards of aviation in the name of equal representation, but unfortunately from now on, every single incident in the air will result in the question of, did diversity contribute to these deaths? As apparently the CEO of United Airlines previously stated this. We have committed that 50% of the class of, of the classes will be women or people of color. And by the way, from all the data I've seen, that's the highest of any airline in the country. One of the things we do is for every job when we do an interview, we require women and people of color to be involved in, in the interview process, bringing people in early in their careers um, as well. Which is shockingly close to the CEO of OceanGate, who's really only known for the catastrophe under the sea. When I started the business, one of the things you'll find, there are other sub-operators out there, but they, they typically um, have uh, gentlemen who are ex-military submariners, and they you'll see a whole bunch of 50-year-old white guys. Um, I wanted our team to be younger, to be inspirational. And Now, did diversity specifically implode that sub? Obviously not. But it does bring into question, if the CEO wasn't so caught up in making a feel-good story behind the company, would they have had more time to focus on other non-essentials, like safety, survivability, and you know, the things that actually matter when going toe-to-toe -to -toe with King Trident? Because unlike Netflix and Disney, when airliners emphasize equity over ability, it's not like their ratings drop, their airplanes do, on fire with people inside. As recently this argument between a veteran pilot and an air traffic controller went viral. Yeah, when you ask for a short approach, I expect you to turn your base to beam the numbers. All right, this will be a full stop for 65 Charlie, and uh, maybe we need to talk about that some more because you're the first controller in 15 years that's ever said that. Well, I'm just, you know, I, I, if you ask for a short approach, a short approach is when you turn your base to mean the numbers. Well, I will definitely look up the definition of short approach because I've never seen where it says you turn base and beam the numbers because I don't see how you could possibly do that. Well, I googled it actually. I googled short approach and it said to turn your base a beam or before the numbers and you will land probably touchdown around midfield. And this is downright terrifying to me, because I know these places are barely ramping up their diversity numbers. Because what happens when there isn't an experienced pilot to counteract her Google search? What happens when there's no longer an adult in the room to actually fly the plane safely, because you know who doesn't care about the color or gender of your team? Gravity. But for some reason, these airlines keep highlighting diversity as if this is what makes travelers choose them over competitors. And Delta isn't the only one, as Southwest has basically the same social media strategy. And sadly, they think this is some triumphant moment for inclusion, but it's actually just the footage they'll play alongside every accident their airline has from here on out. And in all fairness, is what the social media team does actually impacting the flights they're on? Most likely not. But it does make you curious about what they're actually doing behind the scenes. As this verified image of a pilot recently went viral as she apparently boasted about failing a check ride but still became a pilot. Now I had to look it up but a check ride is the FAA's test for aspiring aviators which the Twitter community notes states about 20% do fail the test but still come back to pass it becoming a certified pilot. So like many viral moments online they get taken out of context as a spread but one possible false positive doesn't mean the issue isn't occurring. As even back when Tucker was on Fox, he discussed the issues with DEI impacting flying. But his death is a scandal. 
The reason he died is a scandal, and many in the aviation industry know about it, but it is never mentioned in public. In February of 2019, ASCO was the first officer piloting an Amazon Prime cargo jet for a contractor called Atlas Air. They were flying a Boeing 767. ASCO accidentally pressed a switch that put the plane into go-around mode. Instead of checking his instruments to figure out what was going on, he pushed down hard on the control yoke. He pushed as hard as he could. And then the plane nosedived through the clouds and right into the water. One pilot later told the NTSB that in emergencies, Aska, quote, became extremely anxious and would start pushing a lot of buttons without thinking about what he was pushing just to be doing something. Airlines like Atlas Air, in fact, all the airlines, are doing their best to hire and retrain pilots on the basis of irrelevant criteria like their appearance. Here's from the Atlas Air website, quote, we leverage diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, as a business strategy and driver of innovation. Which is why the meme of, you have died of diversity, is now catching steam. Now I'll be the first to say, I think diversity can be a good thing. And if you, the viewer, aren't also a rooftop Korean with a Lego man haircut and an aversion to enunciating your R's, if you're still watching this channel, you also somewhat appreciate diversity. But our issue with corporate diversity is the forced equity included, as their soft bigotry of low expectations shows that they don't think they can get equal representation amongst the races without actually counting who they have in order to adjust who they're hiring. And it would be one thing if they just went out and said it. We want less whites, which is essentially what they're doing. But Boeing is going entirely too far, as their 2023 Global Equity Report shows they have over 40% minorities, up 5% from three years ago. But also boasting their 7% disabled workforce, highlighting programs like Neurodiversity at Work. And apparently it's not just Boeing, as the FAA has apparently been hiring people with severe intellectual and psychiatric issues. And again, I'm the first to say giving the differently abled work opportunities can be seen as a positive thing. But hiring based on corporate vanity can only be permissible when the company is beyond exceeding all expectations. As I remember in college, I worked for a store that had mentally challenged employees, and all they really did was fold boxes and do very small, insignificant odd jobs. But to my understanding, the government gave us funds to employ them, as they did need to have a supervisor to constantly babysit. But the second the economy crashed, those folks were the first to be furloughed. But the problem here is, when Atlas Air bursts into flames, Alaska Air cracks open in the sky, and American Eagle takes passengers suddenly sledding through the snow, can these companies really revisit their budgets to emphasize safety, or would that hurt their precious non-white percentages they've been working over three years to build? As I imagine that situation between the veteran pilot and air traffic controller, whose specialty is searching things on Google, there are likely many more scenarios just like that that we don't know about. And as these airliners continue to force inclusion in their ranks, we are going to have a lot less veteran pilots that can correct their mistakes. Which brings me to my conclusion, brought to you by my Tim Foyle beanie from decoyboys.com, is that this is actually on purpose. As so much of the official liberal agenda is to discourage the peasants from flying due to the climate, what a happy little coincidence that diversity will also discourage the peasants from flying. And if that doesn't work, how about an old-fashioned outbreak from the 1800s, right in the former first world, American airports? So if you appreciate my concise, light order commentary with a dash of insanity in between, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then go check out the video on how one Delta Airlines employee finally rejected their woke nonsense.